Thank you for coming to my channel. Now, in today's lecture, we will briefly learn about how to maintain good infection control um, in the hospital environment. So, if we work as a nurse, infection control is a very important skill for us to prevent the spread of germs um, on our um, workplace, yeah, which is the hospital. So, to follow infection control, we have to strictly um, understand several different practices, okay? So, now we firstly, we have to know what is infection. So, infection means that the germs, um, either uh, bacterial or virus or fungi, they could spread in the environment through different modes. Um, for example, influenza virus make us to have the flu. So influenza virus spreads through the droplet, which is your um, saliva when you sneeze or cough. So when you cough or sneeze, now the saliva can be spread into the air. Another person, um, when they get in contact with droplet, they could be infected. Yeah. Um, and some other um, virus or bacterial, like they transmit through different ways, um, especially COVID. So COVID is a highly infected virus. Now, since the outbreak of COVID, the infection control become more important. Now, COVID transmit, transmit through the um, air. Yeah, so when you, um, when you um, inhale the air, like which has those COVID virus um, particles, now you could be infected. Yeah. So um, in general, we have three major transmission modes. Yeah, three major transmission modes. They are droplet, airborne, and contact. Yeah, droplet, airborne, and contact. Okay, so droplet means that the um, the pathogen pathogen are those germs that could spread disease. So droplet means that the pathogen transmit um, through the saliva when you cough or sneeze, and the saliva could um, land into another person when you cough or sneeze, and the other person could get it. So an airborne airborne is um, you know transmit um, more easily. Airborne means that the virus or the bacteria could transmit through the through the um, dust in the air. So, um, for example, you have COVID and you sit in this um, place and then for some time, and then uh, when you breathe in and breathe out the air, the virus, the COVID virus, could um, stick to the small air particle and flow in the um, air like as a dust. So when the other person inhale this um, particle from the ear, the other person could get it. So you know that airborne um, transmission like, um, you know, is more serious than droplet transmission. Yeah. So you, do, you don't need to sneeze or cough to um, spread the infection. Yeah. Um, because they Gem could just stick to that very small air particles and flow in the air for several hours. Okay, so that's airborne transmission. Contact transmission means that you could be infected if you touch, yeah, if you physically touch the other person who carry that infectious disease. Okay, so generally speaking, we have three major ways of, um, yeah, of the transmission three major ways yeah, for the germs to transmit um, between person and person. So they are droplet, airborne, and contact. Now, so how do we prevent the transmission? Yeah, now <clears throat> let's come to our major um, topic. So and since we understand the ways that germs could transmit between people, now we have to follow several important practices. Now, firstly is hygiene care. Hygiene care. Hygiene means keep clean, keep clean. So by saying this, as a nurse, we have to always help the patient to keep clean. So how can we achieve this? Um, 
Now, in Australia, we have very strict um, hygiene care policy. For example, we have to provide patients with a shower every day yeah, in the hospital, in, in, in all the hospitals in Australia. Um, a shower, a daily shower is quite important. So we have to provide patient with a nice warm shower every day, okay? So make the patients clean is a very important way to prevent, yeah, prevent the infection. Yeah. So that's hygiene care. Um, other things we can do is, um, yeah, we need to um, um, help the patient to wash their, wash their body either um, giving them a shovel or wash them on the bed. Now some patients, not all the patients um, are independent. So some patients, um, they could not shower themselves, so they need a lot of support, especially for those bad bone patients. Yeah, some patients, they have to stay on bed all the time because they suffer some chronic health conditions. Um, so um, <clears throat> we as nurse, we have to wash the patient on the bed every day if they cannot mobilize, okay? So it, when we give patient a shower on bed, we can call it a bed bath, a bed bath, yeah. That means we get the warm towels, the washers, yeah, to give patient a nice um, wash uh, for their body um, on the bed, okay? So first thing is hygiene care. Keep your patient clean. And meanwhile, you should also keep yourself clean. So when we work as a nurse, um, it's important that we have a shower ourselves every day and we wash our hair, our, um, our body, you know, um, after we look after our patients. And we also need to keep the fingernails short and trimmed. Um, we cannot have jewelries on the body uh, because like long fingernails or jewelries, all these things could hide germs and we don't want that. We also should have a short hair cut um, or tie your hair back and do not um, let the germs to sit, stick on your hair. So hair wash, um, cut the fingers short, have a shower every day, um, don't wear jewelries like rings, like those uh, bracelets like those uh, are very important for the nurses to follow, okay? So that's hygiene care for both you and your patients. Now, next one, um, to prevent um, the transmission of infection, we have to um, apply PPE when we yeah, provide care to those patients who have infectious diseases. So what is PPE? PPE's full name is personal protective equipment. So this include the apron or the gown, the gloves, the eye goggle, okay? Um, these things, so gown, glove, eye goggle, and also mask, yeah, face mask. So if the patient carry any infectious disease, could transmit through either droplet, airborne, or contact, then we have to wear the PPE okay before we uh, do any care for the patient but depending on how the germs transmit if a uh, patient carry an infectious disease that transmits through droplet then we have to wear the face a mask the normal um, surgical mask yeah because the, because droplet virus or bacteria could transmit through the saliva so we have to wear the uh, surgical mask and also the gown and glove Okay, now if the patient carry any infectious disease which transmits through the airborne, through the ear, so because this is more strict, so we, when we um, look after these patients, for example, the patient has COVID, we have to wear a special face mask called N95 mask, yeah, N95 or P2 uh, mask, P2 mask or N N95 mask, so, so this mask, um, gives better protection and this mask is like secret and um, uh, also could prevent yeah prevent very small um, um, particles in the air right to um, prevent the um, droplet transmitted um, germs okay so we have to wear this special N95 mask especially if the patient has COVID yeah COVID now if the patient 
carry any infectious disease which which transmits through contact through physical contact then we have to um, then we have to um, just wear the apron or the gown but we don't need to wear the um, mask yeah only gown and glove if the patient if the germ transmit only through the physical contact yeah then we only need to wear glove and gown but no need mask yeah so depending on uh, what kind of infectious disease that this patient carry we will choose the appropriate PPE to wear before manage our patient uh, another thing is hand hygiene yeah, hand hygiene so we have to always um, clean our hands before we handle our patients now there are different ways to clean our hands in hospital um, we have like um, hospital um, standard soap okay the soap uh, we need to use that to um, um, wash our hands and when we wash our hands the policy is we have to wash for at least um, 40 seconds okay 40 to 60 seconds so when we do the hand washing in hospital as a nurse follow the policy yeah wash 40 to 60 seconds yeah and and there is like a special technique yeah to wash the hands uh, following the policy and um, we also have the alcohol based hand hygiene solution that we can use to do the hand rub okay hand rub say um, if your hand um, is visibly clean yeah visibly clean um, and dry then you 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 just need to use a um, the hand sanitizer yeah to wrap your hand so this is called a hand wrap and uh, when you wrap your hand with sanitizer um, you are required to wrap for 15 to um, 30 seconds okay 15 to 30 seconds yeah when we, when we do the hand wrap now if your hand is visibly soiled yeah dirty visibly soiled then you have to wash your hand with the um, soap yeah hospital standard soap uh, and water for 40 to 60 seconds okay so that's the policy for hand hygiene hand hygiene yeah always clean your hands before you manage your patient now another thing is that make sure when we handle the patient make sure our hand is um, intact the skin is intact if there is any broken uh, area on the skin make sure you cover um, the uh, skin tear with the dressing with a waterproof dressing don't leave any any broken um, skin exposed to the ear okay yeah um, now next one is waste disposal waste disposal so um, when um, when working as a nurse um, we we because we, we need to um, do a lot of nursing procedures for our patients so uh, we need to use a lot of different um, equipment um, to handle the patients right now so there are, there could be a lot of waste yeah waste involved uh, in the patient management so we have to properly dispose the waste into the correct waste bins yeah now we have several different colors of the bin waste bin in the hospital um, if the waste products um, have the risk of transmitting the disease then we have to dispose this waste uh, waste in the clinical waste bin yeah, clinical waste bin now the color of the clinical waste bin in hospital is yellow okay yellow yeah so this is very important so if yeah if if you um, need to dispose the waste waste products which could transmit the disease okay which could spread the disease then you have to dispose this kind of waste in the clinical waste bin which is yellow color now if um, if it's a general waste yeah let, let uh, for example the leftover food like or newspapers you know or um, package like those uh, food wraps like so you, you, you dispose those general waste in the general waste bin, which is normally the green color or uh, black color.
like those. Okay, so black or green color bin is for the general waste. Yeah, now yellow color bin is for the clinical waste, which could spread disease. Yeah, so remember you have to dispose the waste products in the correct waste bin and don't confuse them. Okay, now the last one is to prevent the transmission of the uh, germs. It's very important that we always disinfect the nursing equipment after we use it on the patient. Now, some equipments, they are once used only. So for those equipment, you can just discard it into the clinical waste bin. But some equipment, they can be reused on the patient. So for, the re so for those reusable equipment, we have to disinfect the, the equipment after we use it uh, for each patient. Yeah. For example, um, when we do the vital signs for the patient, like check their blood pressure, the temperature, now the thermometer or the blood pressure machine, the vital signs machine uh, must be disinfected. Yeah. Um, how do we disinfect the equipment? So the policy is, in the hospital, uh, we have that disinfectant wipes. Yeah, disinfectant wipes is also called a detergent wipes. So we can use those wipes, yeah, to wipe wipe off all the equipment that we use on the patient after each use. Okay, so um, yeah, for all the reusable equipment, so after we use those equipment, make sure you wipe the equipment with the disinfectant wipe or the detergent wipe, wipe that is offered in the hospital. Yeah. So the most common um, detergent wipe we use is called a taffy. Yeah, it's called taffy. Yeah. And there are also alcohol-based disinfectant wipes. Yeah, alcohol-based disinfectant wipes. So these wipes contain the alcohol, um, which could um, kill the germs on the equipment after use. Okay, so now we discussed like all these major um, ways, yeah, major practice that we have to strictly follow to maintain a good infection control and to prevent the spreading of the disease for us and for patients. Thank you very much for attending my lecture today. Hopefully, um, you now have a better understanding.